Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be looking at some common special tests used in the diagnosis of carpal tunnel syndrome. Now the gold standard for diagnosing carpal tunnel syndrome is a nerve conduction study. The basic idea with that is there's a normal range for the velocity of nerve conduction at different points along the upper extremity. And so there's a normal range of velocities across the carpal tunnel. So what they'll do is they'll measure the velocity of conduction across that carpal tunnel. And if it's lower by a certain amount, they can then say that it's due to compression of that median nerve and diagnose the person with carpal tunnel syndrome. So unless you're trained in nerve conduction studies, we have to rely on several special tests, most of which are provocative tests. And that's what we're going to cover right now. Now these first two special tests are very similar. They're Phelan's test and reverse Phelan's test. Now Phelan's test is also called the reverse prayer test and the reverse Phelan's test is also called the prayer test. To really understand why these are called as such, we're actually going to start by looking at the reverse Phelan's test, which is the prayer test. To conduct reverse Phelan's test, the patient's either going to be sitting or standing and they're going to press the palmar aspects of both hands together with both wrists coming to at least 90 degrees, as you see there, and hold for 60 seconds. A positive test is going to be reproduction of paresthesias at any point in that median nerve distribution. And by paresthesias, we mean numbness, tingling, or burning, shooting pain, although generally it's going to be numbness or tingling. Now with the reverse Phelan's test, the sensitivity and specificity have not been determined. So for that reason, it's probably best to go with Phelan's test. So Phelan's test is called the reverse prayer test because basically it's upside down compared to the prayer test. So patient is still going to be sitting or standing, but this time they're going to press the dorsal aspects of both hands together, both wrists at 90 degrees, and hold for 60 seconds. So it's basically an upside down or a reverse prayer position. And again, hold for 60 seconds, and a positive test is going to be reproduction of those paresthesias at any point in the median nerve distribution. Now the sensitivity of this test varies, but in the study that I looked at, the sensitivity was given as 84% and the specificity is 87%, so that's pretty good. Now we're going to look at Tennell's test. Anytime you hear the word Tennell, you need to think of percussing a nerve. So in Tennell's test, the patient's going to be seated with their arm face up on a table like this, and the PT is going to percuss along the wrist crease over the median nerve distribution, like you see here. Sometimes they'll start a little bit proximal to the wrist, but making sure to go at least up to that wrist crease. A positive test is going to be paresthesias in the median nerve distribution. And again, here the sensitivity is 82%, specificity is 89%. So that is Tennell's test. Next is the hand elevation test. For this, the patient's either going to be sitting or standing, doesn't matter, and the patient's going to lift their hands above their head and hold for two minutes, so you probably want to get out a stopwatch for this one. And a positive test is going to be paresthesias that are reproduced in the median nerve distribution. The sensitivity here is 87%, and specificity is 89%. Now the flick sign is not so much a special test. It's more something the patient reports that relieves their paresthesias, although if they come in and already have paresthesias, you can try this if they haven't already to see if it relieves their symptoms. So basically the patient sometimes is able to relieve their paresthesias by flicking their wrists like this. Believe it or not, that sometimes can relieve the paresthesias. And you could think of it as a positive test if the paresthesias are relieved or reduced by this maneuver. Last, we're going to look at the square wrist sign. So I have two images of my wrist right here. One is a side view that goes from anterior to posterior, and the other is a top-down view from medial to lateral. And so to do this test, the patient's going to be in sitting with their arm resting on a table or something like that, and you're going to take the following two wrist measurements. One, you're going to take the AP dimension, so you're going to turn the wrist on its side, and go from anterior to posterior at the wrist crease and get a measurement. And then you're going to do the same thing from medial to lateral and get a measurement. Now obviously 
the medial lateral dimension is going to be larger than the anteroposterior dimension. But in carpal tunnel syndrome, there may be swelling on the palmar side of the wrist where the carpal tunnel is. And so that's going to increase the length of this AP dimension. And so to determine the result of the test, you take the ratio of the AP dimension and the ML dimension, so AP divided by ML. And it's a positive test when this ratio is greater than 0 0.7. For a normal healthy carpal tunnel, this ratio will be less than 0 0.7. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of how to diagnose carpal tunnel syndrome. And in the next video, we'll go over some exercises and treatments for carpal tunnel syndrome. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.